Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here playing some more Pathfinder Adventures. It's time to move on to the third scenario of Adventure Deck 4, The Black Tower. Now, in the original version of the game, this scenario had an extra spell in each location. Harpies were harder to defeat by two, and acquiring a spell meant that you had to bury a card from your hand, which could just be the spell that you acquired. The legendary version and the heroic version is actually pretty tame. There's still a spell in each location. Harpies are harder by four instead of by two, so whatever. And the rule has been changed so that when you acquire a boon, you bury a card, which is really not that big of a deal. Now, this scenario is not generic, however, because it has some of the most infamous henchmen of the entire game, the Harpy Monks. So we'll take a look at those, and I feel like that's enough spice for me. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, the, uh, that Obsidian didn't go too crazy with the extra rules for this one, because those Harpy Monks are a bitch. So we have actually uh, the same exact combo as last time. Five fewer cards, and these damn Night Belly Bows, which are so annoying. I really wish they let you close the location, but of course they don't. Here's the Black Monk. He's a pretty generic villain, honestly. Um, if undefeated, bury your discard pilots, but you know, are you ever not going to defeat them? Hopefully not. And then here are the Harpy Monks. So this one is, whenever anybody encounters one of these monks, they have to make, oh, the whole party has to make a Wisdom 8 check, or else they can't play spells or weapons, and on top of that, they have to move to that location. Now on Legendary Difficulty, that is a bitch and a half, because... With all these places kind of far apart from each other, having everybody, like, move on over can make it very, very difficult. Now, the one thing I'm hoping is that that follows the movement rules. Because, for example, Amiri's power, which is, like, move another character to your location at the end of your turn, has to follow the movement rules of Legendary Difficulty. It doesn't just teleport somebody over from clear across the map. However, the Harpy Monks use the exact same language. So, well, not, not however... Also, additionally, the Harpy Monks use the exact same language. It says uh, every other character who makes that, who fails that check, moves to your location. So, I think that that should mean that if they're not within the, the range, that they're going to stay where they are. <laughs> but that's just me naively making my judgments based on the text of the cards, which, you know, never means anything. So, we'll see how that actually works. Uh, this is actually a pretty nice movement path though so I'm, I'm wondering if obsidian did actually implement this contrary to what the text would imply most things are better connected than they, than they have been in other scenarios but um this could be pretty difficult we'll see so ezra's going to start at the academy obviously um the temple is normally where i'd put kira the problem is that uh this on the heroic rules whenever you acquire any boon you have to bear your card so it's not quite so easy to just go through the temple by picking up blessings and then starting them to explore. So I might save the temple for later, I'm not sure. Um, Harsk is my best fortitudinal, so I'm gonna go ahead and put him at the deeper dungeons, although uh, Miri's not bad at constitution or fortitude eight. She could do it. Now, I want her doing the guard tower, so we'll have a Miri at the city gate. She'll be moving into and out of the guard tower. Oh, crap, there's the courtyard. Oh, God, why is the courtyard in every damn scenario? Oh, God. Um... Well, Jesus, I don't know who's going to deal with that. I mean, Sayoni can close it, but she's not. But with her D10 dexterity, she's still not that great at making these checks to avoid all the damage. Crap. Also, Amiri really wants to close the mountain peak, too, doesn't she? God, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Well, Asila with her D6 plus 2, could try to make these 8 acrobatics checks. Ah, oh, it doesn't quite do it. Hmm, okay. Harsk is more significantly good at the courtyard than, like, like the difference between having Harsk here and not is bigger than, like, having Sila here, for example, instead of Amiri, or instead of Harsk. And the guard tower, oh, it is annoying to fight those bandit henchmen at the beginning of the turn. I'll keep Amiri, oh man, but I also want Amiri doing the mountain peak. God darn it, this is just awful. It's a tough one, man. All right, I guess we'll have Sila at the mountain peak and maybe Kira, she does have the fortitude skills. She could do deeper dungeons. We'll try it like that. Man, I am not confident in this and I'm really, really hoping that those harpy monks don't pull everybody over from clear across the map. It does say move, just like Amiri's power says move, so it should be like that. Why did I start Amiri at the mountain peak? That was really dumb. I should have had her move over here. That was quite foolish, so now I have to do this thing. Um, well, we will go ahead and flip a card. 
He's losing an ally for absolutely no reason. So try to avoid bearing a card from the hand. All right, and what do we have here? Oh yeah, we moved over Paralyze, which is not very good, so I don't care about it. And there's an allying dart. All right, that thing's junk. Um, let's just uh, let's just recharge Palagina to get that Tuberdor back, and I'll spend I'll spend this. This is a rechargeable. I'll spend that blessing to go again. There's a Harpy Monk. Well, <laughs> time to find out how this shit works. So, do I want to? Do I care about playing weapons? Well, they are difficulty 18. So yeah, I kind of would like to make this wisdom check if at all possible. There's the Troubadour. This is, I guess that's my other Troubadour. Um, so this is only a 68% chance of success. Let's go ahead and throw a Fox on this. Bump it up to 89. Anybody got a Sagacity or something like? No. Nope. Okay. All right. So Celia can spend weapons. Now we're gonna find out if everybody's just moving on over there. So Amiri rolls a wisdom. Okay, but she was she was adjacent. Ezrin, Ezrin is not a, oh no, I didn't mean to roll it. Okay, well, Ezrin's not adjacent, and he moves over. Oh my god, this is going to be a nightmare of epic proportions. You know, maybe not, I don't know. Maybe it won't be that bad. It might not be that bad. I don't know, because I guess everybody clusters up, and uh, they should be able to get back to where they need to go, I think. Everybody just kind of moves away as a group. Like, it's just, you just have this, like, monster pack, you know. Might be okay. We'll find out. So Harsk can't shoot an arrow because, of course, he's in the same location. Anybody got a Lemashtu for uh, some help here? No Lemashtus. Okay. I can, however, flip a card. Let's do that. And I guess I'm just going to play this Blossom Agorum. That seems fine. 99, that should do it with a reroll. Yeah, that definitely does it. And now to close the location. Let's go ahead and flip a die or flip a card. I do need to close this. 87's not good enough. So much as it pains me, someone's gonna have to play a blessing. I guess you'll play a rechargeable blessing. For 98% odds. Oh my god, that's bad. Oh. Oh god, 98% odds weren't good enough. Well, now we're just, I don't know what to do. I mean, someone's gonna have to come back here and, um, attempt close this location, I guess. Because, I mean, there's no point going through it all. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah, now everyone's got to do the. Oh, this is hilarious. Now everyone's going to start their turn here and is going to have to bury cards. Um, you know, Thief Stools are pretty junk by this point. There's not that much that, that they work against. So I'll just get rid of them and let's move out. So we're going to go to the throne room, I guess. Although Amiri can't actually close this very well. Oh, Jesus. Well, we're doing it. I mean, we're, we're freaking doing it. Um, I don't think I care. Well, sure, I'll recharge a Sage to give myself slightly better odds. I'm not gonna go crazy with it. So I guess that's kind of the nice thing, right? Is I actually I actually want people to fail this so that they move out of the mountain peak and don't have to. Oh God, of course, Ezrin fails it uh, or succeeds at it. He fails to fail, so he's gonna stay in the mountain peak, which I guess is okay because that does let him go to the academy. So yeah, I guess that's kind of nice. The next each time you find a henchman, the whole party moves over. I mean, it's not ideal, but uh, I guess it's not the end of the world either. Sila kind of wants to get out of here. Okay. So this is going to kind of suck. I don't know if I have enough... Um, I don't know if I have enough... What's it called? Uh, like, blessings to help Harsk... Actually, or to help Amiri close this. She does, unfortunately, have a very pesky D4 for Charisma. Because this is, you know... This is survivalist Amiri, so she has a d4 instead of a d6. This is a oh, this is not a reroll. Oh my god, I mess. I should not have been rolling that, but only 89% odds. Okay, so the charisma is just going to be a raw d4s. Uh, I don't have any Ioma days, unfortunately. 84%. I'm gonna play this blessing of Phrasma. I don't. I don't want to settle for 84%. Okay, didn't need it because any two of these dice would have made it, but whatever. So we closed one location, and some people moved over here. This is gonna. This is. I like this actually. This is quite the wild ride scenario. Uh, do I want to move to the courtyard? Not terribly, but then again, I kind of do because I definitely don't want to explore the courtyard. So I'm gonna move over to the courtyard and drag somebody with me. Hopefully, we don't find any horde type things. 
Um, who needs to get out of here and explore other stuff? Uh, I guess Kira really doesn't want to be in the courtyard, so I'll have her get out of there. Alright, so Ezra has to unfortunately do this, or else bury a card. I could recharge the Sage for that, but I'd rather use the Sage for extra explorers. I got, I got cards I can bury. For example, I don't really need the Sahedrin Medallion in this scenario, because there's no automatic damage. Let's get out of here. I'm gonna go here, and I'm gonna use this coal. No, actually, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my super, super thing. I'm gonna use this triple spyglass. Because I want to arrange this to be, okay, well, that's how it's gonna be, huh? Um, well, guess I'm not getting any spells. This thing is junk. I'm not willing to just, like, ignore the henchmen just to get spells from the academy. It's kind of a shame I'm not going to get to explore this place, but uh, I don't need any blessings to defeat it. So we're going to go for it. Now, I do need to make this wisdom check. Okay, yeah, <laughs> there is that. I definitely want to be able to play spells. I've got one blessing, nothing, and two blessings to work with. Yeah, we got to make this check. 94 is just going to have to do it. Okay, that was a little close, but we got there. Now, everyone else can just suck a dong. In fact, I'd like some of these people to fail this check so they can move over. I guess Amiri's whole movement shtick is all kind of useless because everybody is just moving away. I want Harsk to move away, actually, because I don't want him making the check at the mountain peak. The one problem here, I have to admit, is that someone's going to have to get back to the mountain peak at some point. God, it's so annoying that I rolled three dice, three big dice, and couldn't get a six at the mountain peak to close it. It was like three three dice plus one, too. Oh, it was awful. Well, anyway, um, we're going to use my biggest spell here. And conveniently, I actually can use a spell, and then an item, and an ally, all to help this check. Um, and then an orb of magic. There we go. Let's do that. 98% odds. How can I possibly fail? God, that was close. Jeebawebas. Agree. That's nice to have, though it doesn't make a difference because my turn's ending, but it's nice to know that I'll have it next time, I guess. And... Oh, monk dies. This should be an auto-succeed. Yep. Even with my lower augury, thankfully with all the skill feats, or my lower arcane, thankfully with all the skill feats. Better now. And I'm actually really glad I used my triple spyglass because it was the third card that was the henchman, so that was really darn handy. Ew, lost my orb of fire. All right, so we closed two locations. The mountain peak, unfortunately, had a bit of a disaster roll. And so the mountain peak, which should be closed, is open, so that's going to be a grievance. But I do have strides and Amiris and things, so I might be able to still get back to the mountain peak without too many issues. All right, where does Sioni want to go? Uh, the answer is pretty much nowhere. She definitely doesn't want to do Constitution or Fortitude 8, but this place has the most monsters. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to go there and see if I can augur my way to victory. Alright, well, it's a bit of un unfortunate we didn't find the henchman, but we did get one monster down. And, uh, what is her, what is her fortitude constitution? If it's a d6, yeah, I, I can make a d8. Alright, we'll do a staff of minor healing, and let's explore one time. Let's make some progress. There's an ogrekin, okay. I'm not super thrilled about this, but... Ooh, that's annoying. So this thing, even after it's defeated, goes to the bottom of the deck. Which means if, it, if this place ever gets shuffled, kind of gets screwed. I don't think I need the Troubadour, so I'll discard that to use my Arcane Blast. Wait, really? It's that good? Okay, time out. I didn't realize it would be that good. I mean, I thought a 14 was pretty high. I'm going to get rid of the Encanter, because the Troubadour might actually help me like close a location later. And Harsk, I think, is going to shoot an arrow here, just because I want to make sure that I uh, don't get a stupid bad roll and fail. And now he goes to the bottom, because he rolled a 4. Do I get to go again? Well, if I find another monster, then I'm going to have to uh, discard Stride, which I don't really want to do because I do want to um, keep Stride. I might need it later. Okay, so Scrying is a nice pickup. Before I do anything else, let me actually Scry a location. And I guess what I want to Scry is the Courtyard. Just to see if I can get lucky finding the henchman here. Ah, wrong henchman. Well, the good news is that I get to put this Knight Belly Boa and the Goblin Pyre on the bottom. So that can help. Obviously, this can get undone if we stumble into the villain when no one's there to close it. So maybe that would have been a reason to hold on to Scrying and wait. But, um, alright. So Kira's kind of in an awkward spot. This place can't really be augured because it's already got scouting information. 
The mountain peak should be closed, but isn't, so I should just stop whining about it. And uh, then we got this temple, which, whatever. You know what? She's got a bunch of weapons in her hand. I am willing to just pick up some blessings and uh, just discard some of these extra weapons. That's fine by me. Um, should I do uh, a 1 in 12 chance of finding the henchman? No, let's do it first. Wayfinder. It's junk. And even if I pick it up, it would have to get buried, so I don't really care about it. And fine, we'll cast Augury just to get it out of my hand. I will try to find the henchman. Well, I found a henchman, but it wasn't the henchman. Swipe's actually a good spell. I would totally take it if I could get lucky enough to get it. So this is the extra henchman put in by the wild card, which is quickly becoming one of my least favorite wild cards. Lost Augury. Damn. I'm not going to get rid of these weapons. I want to be able to bury them after finding blessings in the temple. Harsk is up. Okay, Harsk actually does not mind being at the deeper dungeon, so he'll do this. And I think I'm actually gonna... See, I'm gonna pop my eagle here. Seems fine. Okay. Nope. There we go. Let's just, uh, let's just look, look, look right where we are. It's fine. Find out what's on top of this place. It's the Nightbelly Boa. God, these boas are just so happy to come up before the regular henchmen. Well, I'm gonna do it. It's fine. So we'll do the Black Arrow Longbow. Let's recharge the Black Arrow Ranger. We're just getting... Hello? Hello? Thank you. We're getting all Black Arrow up in this bitch. Wow, that was a 101. My D6 saved me. Thank you, Black Arrow Ranger. And I'm not going to do a Blessing to Explore because we're kind of low on Blessings right now. It's starting to, starting to become a bit of a problem. Alright. Um, now Sila is also here. Alright, we're definitely having a bit of a crowd, so I don't want to go back to the dungeons. Um... She needs to discard, because she's going into the temple. And there's the Harpy Monk. Okay, well, I guess I'll flip a card. I do have Cure. Blessing of Shellen, no one has those. I don't think I have any in my whole party. So now, one thing I'm curious about is, does everybody have to discard a card when they go? They do! Oh my god, that's awful. Oh, that's bad. I am not a fan of it. Mm. Okay. Um, what do I discard here? I think the, uh, the Acid Arrow is my least valuable card right now. Sioni, she doesn't mind moving. I don't mind moving. But Harsk, I actually really don't want him to move. Because Harsk wants to stay at the dungeons. Wait. Oh, this is Kira rolling for the... Right. Okay, Harsk wants to stay at the dungeons. He does not want to get away from here, so I am going to spend one of his own blessings. Take two extra dice and hopefully not frick this up. Oh my god, you gotta be getting me! Jesus! Okay. Well, we don't need the crown of charisma, so I guess we can discard that. She has a bajillion weapons, so we're going to discard a great club. Flip a card... 94% ain't been working today. Oh, I can't play strength or anything. You know what? F it. Just roll. You gotta make one of these once. Oh my god, that was so close. Okay, so we can close the temple. It's a shame we didn't get to pick up the swipe, but I'll take it. I'm gonna do a quick scan through my party, see who's missing the most cards. So, Sila's got 900 deck, 12, 8, but he's only got 2 cards in the discard. 11, 9, but only 2 in the discard, and he's not there. Okay, so she's going to cure herself with 6 cards in the discard. And missing the most, of course, I rolled a minimum. Nice. And next, try to save this cure. Going from 50 to 90, definitely worth it. Especially because it made the difference. I'm going to recharge this armor at this point, honestly. It's not that valuable. I should have discarded one of those weapons. They're kind of redundant. Okay, so Amiri is up, and I guess Amiri doesn't re- I mean, Amiri could go back to the mountain peak and be the temp closer, but she can also come at it the other way. So yeah, I guess Amiri's gonna go over here and, um, be at the- you know what, I messed up. Hang on. Harsk, I was thinking, wanted to be at the deeper dungeons, but who's doing the courtyard? I guess Sayoni? Oh, it's awful, though. She doesn't do a very good job making this D4 combat damage thing. Mm-hmm crap. I should, I should really have Harsk come over here. But then who's gonna close the deeper dungeons? Well, I can have Sila go over there, but then everybody's gonna leave anyway whenever we find a Harpy Monk, so fuck. Okay, Sila's gonna go there and do that, and then I guess Harsk doesn't go to the courtyard. So I guess it's a good thing after all that Harsk got pulled over. 
Uh oh. Oh, this is a heart. This is the worst thing. This is the exact same thing. This is the exact same thing as a harpy monk. Except it's not a monk. It's just a regular old harpy. Well, fuggity duggity do. Oh, man. I don't even know if I should be trying to make some of these, but we'll just. We'll just roll with it. Okay, we'll just we'll just roll because I'm rolling dice. I I still though I have to say I like this scenario. This is this is just so fun with the the movement restrictions and everybody just like flying around like crazy all the time. No, I should have got I should have flipped the card. I want her to go back to those deeper dungeons, don't I? I sure do. Okay, well um, Harsk is here, so he can't shoot a thing. But Ezra actually made his roll, so here's a time to use strength. Um, Amiri can bury a card. Nah, I'll just use a blessing for a couple. For a die. Actually make the roll. And now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scout up. Hate this card so much. We'll encounter it. Fail to get it. God, that's so annoying that it was an extra harpy. But wasn't even the harpy henchman. Alright, let's take a quick look at what I want to do movement wise. Um, Amiri, well, now Harsk is next to the courtyard. Amiri could go here, and she could go to the deeper dungeons. I guess I want her doing that. Well, that was a really loud thunderclap. I guess I can have her doing that because she's the moving person, so maybe it's good for her to try to head back here. Um, the other thing is I can move someone over here, but I don't really want to. So, yeah, we'll just end the turn and have her move away and not move anybody with her. So we'll do it later. I have to dip. What? Oh, this is still a thing? I did not realize that. I thought when the temple was closed, it was just fine. Wow, this is like the most cards the temple has ever taken from me. Okay, lightning bolts. Okay, fine. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, man. God, these failings by one are starting to kill me here a little bit. Uh, that's a bug. Okay, hang on. I have a really interesting choice to make. I can actually take advantage of a bug. It's letting me move again for some weird reason. Um, I'm not gonna do it. I could do it justifiably because I've definitely been screwed by enough bugs, but in this particular scenario, there haven't been any bugs. Well, there's the fact that the harpy monks don't do what they say, but I should have figured that that was probably gonna be the case, so I'm not gonna cheat, though it was very tempting. And Ezrin's up. So Ezrin really only has one useful thing to do. He's gonna go over here and continue exploring this place. Mask here. This would be a nice thing to pick up. It's a really good spell, and it would let me go again. Anybody got a wisdom blessing? No, but there is two dice to pick up a boon. I'm gonna just leave it at this. And get it. Nice. I don't want to cast it, because that would banish it. Am I gonna be able to pass it off on somebody? Hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's likely to happen, so we'll just keep going. Ambush. Um... Hmm, uh, sure, I'm fine with fighting something. There is a 1 in 3 chance of it being the henchman, because it could be a Nightbelly Boa, fuck, or the henchman or the monster. And of course it was the Nightbelly Boa. God, I hate these things so much. Okay, so Nightbelly Boa comes on, and we're going to use our Force Bolt, the biggest thing we got. Harsk is at this location, so he can't help. 92% odds. 92%, 92%. That's... Okay, we'll do an Incendiary Cloud. There we go. Kill the boa. Let's see if I can get something good here. Nope. Ooh, that is probably not going to be that useful, but we'll take it. And I can keep going because I've got augury and I've got haste. And I've got the coal of uncanny discernment. So let's do augury first. Maybe I should have done this first first. What is an ataxian? I don't actually know, but it's gone now. Am I going to fight the harpy monk? Well, the thing I have to remember is that I need to make that wisdom check. But somebody's got a sagacity, I'm pretty sure. Someone's got a, someone's got a sagacity, so I think I can actually make it. So I am going to just uh, haste into this and get it done. I've got stride on hand, so I can make up a little bit for um, a lack of movement. Someone's going to have to get back to the mountain peak. I could very well lose this just because there's those two open locations that are kind of far away from everything. But, um, 
I think it's I think it's worth it. Someone oh yeah, if someone finds the villain, they can also they can always dodge to the temple too if, if to to help set it up. So I need to make this check. Although it's not sagacity, it's improved guidance. Although do you have sagacity? No, you don't have sagacity. So um, anybody got a wisdom blessing or something? Nope, of course not. Uh, let's see, throwing two d tens seems a little bit loose, but I don't think I can afford to spend two blessings. So all right, we're just gonna have to throw two d tens and get a five. All right, did it. Nice. Now everyone else can just suck a log. Come join me at the party at the city gate. I'm actually kind of glad she made this because her having to go back through the temple would have been really annoying. Because you have to discard a card when you're passing through, even when... Um, yeah, you have, to, you have to discard a card passing through, even when it's closed, which I don't think I even knew. Now, this is one interesting case, because I actually kind of want Amiri to stay where she is. I guess I will spend one blessing, which is a rechargeable blessing. 41% is not great. Uh, okay, fine. Harsk, we'll spend another blessing. I'll take 83% odds and roll three ones. All right, so I spent two blessings for nothing. That's good. That That's actually potentially a bad thing. Uh, I fail the recharge on that. So now I gotta get back to those damn dungeons. Um, let's just do a lightning bolt. That seems pretty straightforward. 97% odds is just gonna have to get the job done. Okay, good. Now, I do have another lightning bolt for the bandit henchman, which is nice. And flask of shock I don't think I'll be using, but it's good to have later, I guess. So let's close this thing. I'm gonna encounter it. Recharge invisibility, because I don't think I really need it in this scenario. I don't think I even need lightning bolt. I think frost ray should do it, yep. 100% guaranteed. And down it goes. So I'm doing a pretty good job closing locations with, um... A little more than half the scenario left, I still have... I've already closed, like, a bunch of different places. And keep in mind that I started with five fewer blessings, and I lost extra time because of the Nightbelly Boa henchman. However, we're also gonna... We still have more time to lose, because we're gonna lose more time with the Harpy Monks pulling everybody around. I gotta really think about what to do here. So right now, there is this mountain peak, which is just a Achilles heel right here for me. Uh, it should be closed, but it's not, so someone's gonna have to get back there. There are these deeper dungeons which have two monsters on the bottom and then this belt. So there's really only these eight cards. So the villain could be in there. The villain could be any of the 12 cards in the courtyard. Thankfully, two of which have been put to the bottom. And the villain could be any of the 12 cards in the guard tower. So if the villain's near the bottom of its respective deck, I could be in trouble. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to stride Kira to the guard, closer to the deeper dungeons. Kira has the fortitude skill. So while it is a little bit difficult for her to close the location with blessings, it can be done. And she has a pretty high wisdom, a D10 rather than a D8, or the, rather than a D12, unfortunately, because she is the fighter, Kira. But uh, she does have a wisdom skill, so with blessings, she can make the checks to resist the allure of the really sexy harpy monkeys. Harp, not harpy monkeys, harpy monks, begging your pardons. All right, so how do we do this? Uh, this place is just awful. It is just unbelievably awful. But, let's see, it started with... Three monsters, a night belly boa, and the real henchman. So there's three monsters left in here to fight, including the henchman. So there's, there's a one in three chance that we get the henchman. Uh, and she can make the check to block the damage. Somebody's got a dexterity blessing for her. Yeah, there's a dexterity blessing there. But I'd rather have Harsk go here, because he's just the best at it. And she's not holding too many cards. I'm going to have her go to the guard tower. I'd rather her fight a Bandit Henchman than, than take D12 damage all the time. Let's actually bury Papa Santis just in case something bad happens. I don't want to waste him, and I didn't actually waste any healing either. So now we're going to explore. And we got a Sound Enforcer. Um, deep, deep, beep, nip, deep, this thing's junk. But hey, uh, that's cool. Uh, oh, no, it's not, because... No, it's not cool, because I have to bury a card because of the legendary rules. I'm going to hang on to Stride. I think it's a little bit too important. Um, I'm actually going to bury the Scorching Ray. It's a bit risky to do this, but I'm going to go again with the Sound Enforcer. There's only a 1 in 11 chance I find the Henchman. Uh, unfortunately, this thing's annoying. Crap. Wait, no. Hang on. Blessings of the Gods right now actually give two dice, if I'm not mistaken, because of this Blessing of Milani. So I can save the Dexterity Blessing for later. 
Alright, that's it. Uh, nothing else to do. Do I want to use stride? Um, not really, no. So, well, yeah, no. Doesn't, doesn't do me any good. Okay, so now Kira is going to go back to these d deeper dungeons. And see what's happening. Oh, this is a pretty safe time. Missed it. Doesn't really matter. I want to save my blessings. And I'm... Let's see. Do I have more blessings? I got a bunch more blessings. I have way too many of these damn weapons. My best weapon here, I guess, is that Icy Long Spear. So I'm going to get rid of all the other ones. Try to get my blessings into my hand. That's pretty good. And now we can actually start making some checks. Now, Harsk here is going to that courtyard. Because he's got to... I don't want to find the villain because right now if I find the villain, the villain's going to run to the mountain peak, which would be super annoying. Uh, can I afford to spend a blessing? Well, yeah, I think I can. I think I can. Let's actually, um, let's actually spyglass first just to see what's here. A harpy monk. Okay, well, um, yeah, I want to do it. I don't need that magic half plate. Let's get it done. So, um, well, I'd have to spend a blessing to explore. And then I'd have to dodge... Well, no, I have the I have the tunic to dodge the damage. I do need to make that wisdom check to be able to use my bow. But then I don't want anyone else fighting that harpy monk because this dexterity acrobatics shit is just unreally bad for people. Alright, this is going to be tough, but I think I just have to suck it up and get it done. So let's do the harpy monk. Alright, so this is for the, for the courtyard. If I fail this, I'll just discard the tunic, so it's not the end of the world if I fail. Now, I want to be able to use weapons. Well, she's got a lot of stuff. And this, I believe, is a shell. And does this give me wisdom? It does. 93% is going to have to do it. You've got to be fucking kidding me. I just cannot make my 90% roll. So he's going to be punching, punching that Harpy Monk to death, which is, which is great. It's what I wanted. I actually don't mind people moving over here because it brings us closer to the mountain peak. Ah, uh, Miri, I'm very happy she's failing. Crap, I should have played another Blessing, but there was that one time where I played two Blessings and got nothing out of it, and then I was like, it was annoying. <sighs> it's actually good that Ezrin moved over, though, because... And actually, let's see, do I want her to move over? I don't want her to move over because... <sighs> I, it's tempting to get her out of the Guard Tower, but she can't get over to the Guard Tower. Unless Ezrin strides her over, and he doesn't have Stride in his hand. Or Haste. So, crap. If she moves over, then the guard tower is going to take two extra turns to get over there. Um, and the villain is now in the guard tower or in the deeper dungeons, and I need to explore those places pretty heavily. Alright, I'm going to have to spend a blessing to try to make this. 93% odds. Okay, that time it worked. So that's good. And then she does not want to leave either. 79% is a little bit abysmal, but I just had to, I had, I didn't have any other blessings. Okay, so he's going to punch her to death, hopefully. Um, what can we do? Well, Wand of Veneration, this is the time to do it. Definitely. It got maximum value, fantastic. So that makes it a lot easier. Flask of Shock for a couple of D6s. Let's poog it up here for another plus three. 90% now, very good. Do I take a 90% roll? Um... I don't think so. This is a rechargeable blessing anyway. Let's make it 98. Kill the harpy with our bare fists. Auto succeed on the wand of re or er, wand of innervation. And recharge that Saren Ray. And close. Okay, so how do we close this? Well, we need to get a five on the dice. Kira pretty much used up all her blessings. She's gonna need to heal herself. Does she even have a cure? She does. Okay. So I discarded all those weapons to get all a bunch of blessings, and then I promptly proceeded to use up every single blessing that she had. So she's very hurting for cards. Eagle, I guess I should use it before my turn ends. Um, let's look in the guard tower. I'm hoping to scout the villain. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Okay. So Harsk's done. Ezrin is also looking a little peaked. Deck starting to get a bit smallish. Harsk is also starting to get a bit smallish. Now this is kind of an annoying in-between land there where nothing really fits. Uh, okay, so Sila, I guess, is going to just trudge back to the guard tower, try to help pin that place down, and then nothing happens. And then Amiri... 
is gonna have to go to the mountain peak to act as a temp closer. But she can't move anybody with her, but she's there by herself. So it's hard because we have to find that damn villain. Now, Ezrin doesn't have any of his movement cards, so he's gonna go and he'll be able to do the guard tower on his next and final turn. Um, do I want to get to any particular card? I guess not. Augury could be useful. Sione has to fight a henchman. And unfortunately, she doesn't have two combat spells. She only has one. Alright, I'm going to discard Mr. Tamros to kill this bandit. Now, does Ezrin have Augury? Does that, is that what I remember seeing? Yeah, let's actually have her cast Stride on Ezrin. I guess what I'm really counting on is scouting out the villain. Because, um, I want to find him and be able to set things up. Oh my god, that was super lucky. I actually should have, I should have had her explore, because that was that bug. She should have explored first, gotten the Toxic Cloud, then had Ezrin cast Augury, but luckily the villain is right there. Oh my goodness, we might actually win this. Oh, <sighs> okay. So, now, I have... Kira in place to close the dungeons. I have Harsk in place, or sorry, uh, Miriam in place to close the mountain peak, and I have um, Harsk helping, uh, being able to help out. Yeah, I think we're ready to go. I think we're ready to go. Let's do this. Let's go in there. So luckily, the villain's pretty generic. It just makes it harder to. Um, Defeat him is going to be a difficulty 24 combat check, which is pretty high, but it's not insurmountably high. And Amiri can reach or bury a card to help herself on this survival check, which is really nice, because if it was a regular Amiri, I would have had to spend a blessing here to do it. Alright, now, the current blessing is Gazra, which closes the location. Anybody got a blessing of the gods? Uh, unfortunately not. And this, however, is a constitution blessing, so 95%. Is that good enough? No. <laughs> no, not even close. I know that Sioni can make it without uh, Harsk's blessing, so I'm going to make sure that that place closes. And now, uh, let's do this. So I fail this, obviously. I really couldn't care less about it. And now she does her fiery bolt. Harsk will do a couple of things. He's going to shoot. He's going to shoot an arrow, and then this is undead, so I can throw a d8, or a d8, or no, a d4 plus 1. A d8 is a 4.5, a, a d4 plus 1 is a 3.5, so let's go for the d8. And Kira still has one blessing left. Amiri has one blessing left. It's not going to be my grandest takedown. But I had to use every single blessing for 99% odds, and we got there. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. If you want to stick around to see me dither following the scenario, then please stick around and let's dither away. Victory! Okay, so I forget what the reward for the... Oh, I think the reward is some kind of a loot card, maybe? Let's take a quick look here. Ah, yes, we got loot. So that means the game is going to give everybody some special cards. This is not part of the card game, but uh, the digital game gives every makes sure everybody gets a card on the scenarios where there's just loot. This thing's junk. That thing's okay. Wait a minute. Am I, are we all getting armors? Is that the reward for this? No, no. Staff of Heaven and Earth. Sorry about that jump cut, everybody. I had to take my fiance to work because it was raining, and she had to go to work 15 minutes earlier than I thought. Anyway, Staff of Heaven and Earth is one of those cards that I have a really love-hate relationship with. On the one hand... You look at this card and you think about all those times you got wrecked by a slashing blade or a falling bell or collapsed ceiling or whatever the fuck, and you're like, oh yeah, this is great, I can defeat any barrier, wow. But then on the other hand, a lot of the times, Ezrin doesn't really go to barrier heavy locations, and when he does, a lot of the times there are barriers that are friendly or you can just ignore them, or you can just defeat them anyways. And so this doesn't end up being that useful. On the other hand, I do have some crappy items in my party, so maybe I will hang on to that, but I would have rather seen something like a magic spyglass if I was going to get something from the deck. Okay, this is a decent one. 
I don't know that either Ezrin or Sione have enough arcane to auto recharge this. Let's see, Sione's is plus three. Oh yeah, she, no, it's plus seven. So she always has a one in 10 chance of failing. Well, maybe I'll keep it, we'll see. It's just a fun card. And there's the Emerald Codex. Now this card I have another love-hate relationship with. It's so fun. It's just undeniably fun. But it's probably not actually that good. So, I don't know. I might keep it in my stash. I'm not sure I'm actually going to use it in this playthrough because it is legendary. Every little bit counts. And uh, I just don't think it's actually good enough to keep. This is the way to block fire damage. It's actually a pretty nice pickup. So I am going to keep that and get rid of the, I guess, Elven Breastplate. You got this shield, which is junk. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> <coughs> ah, excuse me. Ezrin has Mass Cure, which is nice. So, who's going to take it? Gosh, I kind of need to take some more spell slots for my people. You know, sagacity. Sagacity. Yeah, it's fun, but it's no it's no Mass Cure. So let's do that. And you also have an extra item, which is the staff. Um, well... Hmm, I can't exactly give the Orb of Fire or the Flask of Shock. I guess I can give the Coal of Uncanny Discernment to somebody. We'll try it. There's some crappy items like Amiri has... Oh god, Amiri has such garbage, it's unbelievable. Okay, we'll do this. You have an extra card as well. Hmm, Staff of Minor Healing is pretty good for Amiri. We can get rid of another junk item like these Amulet of Frozen Fist. God, how do I have such bad cards? And this thing has got to be bad. I mean, it has so much text, you just kind of want it to be good, but I think it's just terrible. So we're going to get rid of that. The Emerald Codex. Oh, God, the Emerald Codex. It's just so fun, but it really isn't very good. It, it I just can't... There's no two buts about it, guys. It, it's just, like, random, and you don't always get something that helps you. I'm just going to take it out. I've, I've, I've put in my time with the Emerald Codex. I don't think I need it. This thing is not that good. I mean, I guess it's better than, like, an elven chain shirt. So we'll do it like that. Let's take a look at view all. Yeah. So the question is, am I willing to banish the Emerald Codex? I don't want to get stuck with it. If I manage to banish one of my shitty items, I want to get a better item from the box. So I'm going to get rid of it. Yeah. Seems a little bit harsh to throw away my reward for the scenario, but I've played with it enough times to know that it just doesn't ever really seem to be much of a game changer. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon with some more Pathfinder. Take care.